Hi, this is International Master David Vigorito with ChessLecture.com, and today we're going to be uh, discussing an unusual topic that's not brought up too much um, regarding move orders in the opening and how to avoid getting tricked into something that you didn't intend to play. And uh, I'm going to be looking basically at uh, some Nimzo Indian stuff and the things that go along with that. So I'm going to start by heading towards a Nimzo Indian position. E4, knight f6, c4, e6. Um, and I noticed that in um, the chess marketplace, there's tons of books on the Nimzo Indian, which is knight c3, bishop b4. Um, and the reason for this probably is it's a very easy opening to show somebody. Black develops very quickly, threatens to double white's pawns. Um, it's very highly regarded at all levels and gives black good winning chances without really taking any undue risk. Now, the, the issue that I take with this flood of books on the Nimzo Indian is that when you play the Nimzo Indian, you can't just play the Nimzo Indian. White can avoid it very easily. For example, by playing here knight f3, or by playing g3, the Catalan, and if the Nimzo Indian is your main defense in the closed openings, meaning anything but e4. Uh, it's also easy to get tricked after a move like c4 or a move like knight f3 into something that you don't play. Um, so I'm going to kind of address some of these issues because I think they're very common. I've, I've actually played these moves like c4 and knight f3 a lot with white myself. And I find, you know, below master level and even at master level, a lot of times I can trick people into playing an opening that they didn't intend to play. So let's go back to the main position here, because there's really two different approaches for black here, perhaps three, if white does not play knight c3. Knight c3, bishop b4, the Nimzo Indian, very nice for black, flexible. Um, but after knight f3, we'll also look at g3, black has a couple main approaches here. It's really three main approaches for black. You could say four, two, if you count on d5 which would transpose to a queen's gambit. And the first main approach is the queen's Indian. Very solid, but also uh, kind of difficult to win with. You know, it is, this accounts for a lot of draws at a high level, kind of like the, the Petrov. Um, the theory is very deep, but it's it's uh, probably more boring than something like the Nimzu Indian. Um, another approach is the Bogo Indian, bishop b4 check. Another solid opening. Um, oftentimes white can get a little something, but it's pretty boring. And the sharpest move is c5, heading for a Benoni if white plays d5, which white does not have to play. Maybe the best theoretical move, but white can play other things like g3 or knight c3, transposing to an English opening. So first we'll mention the Queen's Indian which is probably the most popular way to play with a Nimzu Indian. Now, the first thing I'm going to really discuss is the trick with this from a different move order. If you're trying to play this opening, if I go back, what should you do against knight f3 or against c4? The thing with c4 is, if, if you want, you can just learn something that won't transpose to anything like e5, and, and then you're pretty much done. You just learn that. But if you want to minimize your study time and kind of have openings that mesh together, not have to learn that, and head for a Nimzu Indian, the first problem here is knight f6, knight c3, e6. If white plays e4, suddenly you're in a different opening. This is called the Mykonis attack. Black needs to play either c5 or d5 here. Both very sharp. Uh, they both might be okay for black, but Black players tend to avoid this position. Usually white gets the initiative. It's not very easy for black to win. And I'm gonna, I'll make a recommendation for black there too, but also after knight f3, if you try to play the queen's Indian, knight f6, c4, e6, um, white can play g3, white can play knight c3. And knight c3, uh, if you do b6, white can play e4, and it's, it's not so easy. So 
the first thing I'm going to talk about is if you want to play the Queen's Indian, what are your options against Knight F3 and C4? And what I would recommend if you're going to play the Queen's Indian is against C4, play B6. It, uh, it kind of might have a little bit of a dubious reputation. It's called the English defense, but uh, most English opening players are very uncomfortable, I think, meeting this opening with, with, uh, with white. I think a lot of English players like to play g3 on move 2, and now bishop b7 is a little awkward. Usually white will follow with d4, and black can play e6. And this is an interesting opening. Um, Jesse Cry plays this opening a lot. He's played it on very high level um, in tournaments in Europe and in the U.S. Championship, and scores pretty well with it. And I think the opening itself actually scores pretty well. And one of the main lines here that probably most of the grandmasters play, knight f3, bishop b7, um, I'm sorry, they play a3, play quick a3, bishop b7, knight c3. Now there's two different ways for black to play here. Black can play uh, quick f5, kind of get a funny looking dutch, which is playable, but probably the best way for black to play is just play knight f6. And now after knight f3, we're in a regular Queen's Indian, so you've just kind of transposed back into something you were ready for anyways. So that's one solution. Now against Knight F3, Black has a couple different approaches. You can play Knight F6, C4. If you really want a Queen's Indian, you're willing to play a Hedgehog type structure, you can play B6. White, white can still kind of avoid a true Queen's Indian by playing without a quick d4. I can try to play e4. But I think a Queen's Indian player would be pretty comfortable with a lot of these structures. But I can still aim for d5. Really the only move for white to really avoid trying to um, play d4 with a normal Queen's Indian is to play rook e1 quickly, trying to play e4. And black can either play c5, e4, and followed by d4, getting a hedgehog structure. Or black can play d5, and we're going to get something similar to a queen's indian. Just something that I think is easier for black to study if the black player is familiar with the queen's indian structure, as opposed to learning a whole new opening. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these move orders, too, is if you play the, the mainline queen's indian, this position, uh, the most popular move for black is bishop a6. Hitting the c-pawn here followed by uh, just quick development on the king side, castling, castling over here. But if we look at this here, where we're attacking the c-pawn, this popular line from another move order, it's very hard to get this. White does g3. Here, bishop a6 has less point because white hasn't done d4 yet. So there's no check on b4. So what I would recommend to the black player is to, even if you want to play the lines with bishop a6 in the main line, to at least learn the older lines with bishop b7. There's actually probably probably less theory on the old move bishop b7 than on bishop a6, just because bishop a6 has been so popular with the world's top players for the last decade or so. There's just tons of theory, and a lot of it just works out to draw his position. And um, sometimes there's some innovations if you saw the... Uh, couple of a non-game from Argentina the other day. It was a long draw, but the couple have played a novelty probably around you know, move 20 or something. Whereas if you play bishop b7, you get a solid position if you just know a little theory. You just develop the pieces normally, and um, both sides still have some chances to mix it up, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a super drawish line. So in this position, after knight f3, knight f6, c4, Black can play b6, or black can play e6. Now, if you play e6, of course white can do d4, and we're just back in a normal position. White can play knight c3, too. And here again you have a choice. You can do b6, which allows e4, which might be annoying, or you can play bishop b4, and you kind of still play a Nimzo style. So if you're, if you're used to this kind of position and you like playing with knights against bishops, this is a good way to play. We'll usually play queen c2 and a3 quickly to get the bishop pair. And both sides have a flexible position. White will get the two bishops, but black still develops quickly. 
Now the other move that black can play here is uh, white can play here is g3, after which black can still do b6, heading for a queen's Indian. Also, black can play d5, which is going to lead me into the other position here for the person that wants to play the Nimzo and Queen's Indian is after g3, you can't really play the Queen's Indian. b6, just bishop g2. Very uncomfortable hitting the rook. So the other way to play this, if you're trying to play the Queen's Indian, I think black should really just play d5. Knight f3 is the most common move. And then I would recommend d takes c4. And after bishop g2, Black has a few lines here. I'm not really going to go into all the theory. I'm just trying to help create a repertoire. But lines with good reputations are just bishop e7 and castles. Um, knight c6 is very popular and has a good reputation, and it's a pretty good fighting line. Um, the Catalan's a very solid opening for white. But knight c6, there's a couple different lines black can play with a quick rook b8 or a6, trying to hold the pawn with b5. And there's also some wild lines with bishop b4 check for black. So it's really just about kind of choosing a line. But in an opening like the Catalan, it looks very, very placid. But if you're not ready for it, if you've just been reading your Nimzo Indian books, maybe the Queen's Indian, something like the Catalan can be very disconcerting to me. And you can end up with a worse position very easily with no prospect of counterplay. So if you, if you have something like this in your main repertoire against d4 and c4, when white does play a flank opening like knight f3, knight, knight f6, c4, um, you don't have to rush into a queen's Indian. You can do e6. And if knight c3, you can play bishop b4. And if g3, you can play d5. And white can play d4, bishop g2. And then here again, d takes c4 is probably the, the most active line for black to uh, basically just White maybe threaten to hold the pawn. While white gets the pawn back, black will catch back, catch up in development and equalize without much difficulty in general. So if you're intent to play the queen's Indian, that's what I would recommend. Now, an opening like Bogo Indian can be kind of hard to play because this is the only position you can play it from. And it's not a bad opening, it's just... Um, it's, it's susceptible to only one move order. So if white plays something like c4 and move one, if you really want to play the Bogo Indian, you're not going to here. So really you have to have a backup opening, whether it be a Queen's Indian or you play c4, b6, only in this position. Depends. Depends uh, what kind of lines you'd like. Because even in the Nimzo Indian, you can play a lot of lines with b6. And of course the Queen's Indian, you play b6. So the Nimzo player would probably do well if he plays the Bogo to also be familiar with some kind of Queen's Indian structure. Because against c4 and knight f3, again, you're not going to be able to get a Bogo Indian here. There's no check. Knight c3, bishop b4, but g3 might be a problem for you. Because most Bogo Indian players are going to play um, the Bogo against the Catalan. So you hear the Bogo Indian works. But if white starts out by delaying d4, by playing c4, knight, knight f3, g3, there's, there's no check to be had on b4. Now, another way of tackling this is to just play against knight f3 and c4, is to play c5 in either position and try to play an accelerated dragon with g6, which is a completely different opening, but it depends on your, your uh, repertoire against e4, too. If you can play these Marazzi bind positions, which are generally pretty comfortable for white, um, but very solid for black. But if you can play these lines with black, you can avoid a lot of move order problems. So say you play something like the Benko, or you know even like an opening like the Budapest or something like that, um, you don't have to worry so much about knight f3 and c4 and move one if you can play this opening. It's a book by Eugene Perlstein that just came out with this opening, and it actually has a Nimzo Indian approach with this opening too, with the accelerated dragon. So against c4, just c5 against knight f3, c5, and black's never really worried about being tricked. So now there's a third approach for black when white avoids the Nimzo with either g3 or knight f3, which is to try to play a Benoni. Like if black likes sharp lines of the Nimzo Indian, black might relish a Benoni. And this is popular even at a, at a pretty high level because the most dangerous lines of the Benoni are lines where white has delayed knight f3. 
oftentimes white will want to play moves like e4 and f4. So when white's played knight f3, it's a little less dangerous. Same thing with, with g3. g3 is generally not that dangerous against the Benoni. And probably one reason g3 is not so popular in this position at a high level is because of c5 with a comfortable Benoni. Now one issue black has to consider in trying to play the Benoni here is white doesn't have to play along. White can play knight f3. And here, really, black needs to just go into an English opening in this position, where black can play bishop b4 check, or black can play knight c6. And also in this position, after c5, white can play g3 transposing, or knight c3. And again, we're going to be in an English opening, where black again can play bishop b4, knight c6. But I think uh, a lot of players aren't really ready for stuff like this. You know, you, still, you only have so much time. You have a defense to e4. If you're going to play the Benoni, you're probably playing something sharp like the Knight or, if, or some kind of Sicilian or French. Um, and then you look at the Nimzu Indian on the Benoni, and then White does something like Knight c3 or g3 here, and all of a sudden you're grown because you're stuck in, in an English opening. So if, if Black wants this approach, because you have to be ready for the English, what I would recommend after knight f3 is one of two things. Either c5, if you want to play Sicilian, or knight f6, and then f c4, c5. And really just going to be ready for an early d4, like if d4, you can, you can play e5 here, even there's a few moves, but if you play e6, you're most likely going to get back into your repertoire, because white will play knight c3 or g3, and then you'll be right back in your lines. And if white doesn't do d4, say knight c3, again, you can do knight c6 and, and e6. And again, c4. Um, there's actually a kind of a move order trick for black here, if you want to play some of these, these lines. If you do c5, sometimes g3 is annoying, especially if you want to play some kind of queen's Indian or hedgehog position with b6. So what I would suggest for black here is actually this kind of tricky move, knight f6. Looks simple, but I think it's tricky. Um, here g3 really is, is not really a good move, because c6 just uh, pretty much equalizes for black on the spot. Won't, won't be the kind of position that you prepare, but after bishop g2, c5, white is in um, kind of a, a, a slav position with a fianchette with bishop, which isn't that effective. It's playable, but it's, it's not that scary. You could play e6 here, too, try to aim for something else as well. Um, but most players here will do knight c3, and then you can play c5. And now g3 is a little less effective, because if you play e6, bishop g2, this knight is on c3 a little early, so black can do d5, and white will not be able to stop black from playing the space, gaining d4, which gains space and time. So usually what white will do after e6 is play knight f3, and then black can play b6 if he wants a hedgehog, or play knight c6, trying to aim for an English opening, similar to the Benoni. So having these ideas in your in your repertoire is very important, because a lot of games will, will not just start d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3. Not everybody will just let you play an Imzo Indian. So you really have to be prepared for, um, for knight f3, and g3, and not only for those openings, but also from positions where white delays d4, so you don't get tricked into a line that you don't want to play. Um, and I really think the suggestion of c4, b6 is very interesting if you like to play um, kind of some unclear lines. Um, I think b6 is very effective. I actually had a game last year where I could have resigned on move 14 with white, with no captures having being made which was pretty embarrassing. Um, a very interesting thing about this opening, too, is if you if you look at the Larson opening for white with b3, nobody's really worried about that, and I'm not. I've actually always beat this opening. But somehow c4, b6, even though it's the same position, white has this extra move c4, which doesn't really hurt him. I think it's just a, a psychological issue of, of fighting for the advantage, whereas after b3 on move one for white, black's kind of just happy to equalize and try to gradually take over the initiative, but c4, b6, a lot of times white will just try to punish black, and it will backfire. So hopefully some of these tools can, can help you prepare for your games, um, because everything's all about the Nimzu Indian these days, and 
these repertoire books don't really consider um, the Queen's Indian and Catalan so much, as well as C4, Knight F3, and Move 1, which are very annoying for the tournament player. And it's, it's very easy to caught unaware, get caught unawares. So hopefully some of these tools you can use in your game. Um, I highly recommend you investigate further so you're better prepared. And we will see you next time. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.